You know it's a big match when there's a line like this outside Gregory Gym. Omaha is calling. Ohio State and Texas so close to a national semifinal appearance. The Buckeyes haven't been in 28 years. Texas is trying to go back for the first time since 2020. They have packed Gregory Gym to watch these two teams battle it out for a spot in Omaha. Here's how our bracket looks right now. Oregon and Louisville are currently in action over on ESPNU. We're getting set to start here in Austin, but we have all eight teams in action on our ESPN family of networks today as we send four of those to the national semifinals. Let's go. We are so fired up for this match. Courtney Lyle alongside indoor national champion, beach Olympic bronze medalist Holly McPeak. And look, Texas, the number one overall seat for the second time in program history. They are a well-balanced group, too. But their serving has been so important. They're one of the top aces, acing teams left in the tournament. You're right. Texas took some time to focus on their serving. They wanted to add precision and more pace the last part of the season, and it has paid off. They've got three of the top five servers left in the NCAA tournament, and it's helping get teams out of system and putting so much pressure on their opponents. And it's not just the aces that show up on the stat sheet. Even when they don't get an ace, they're getting those opponents out of system, and that's why Texas's opponents in the NCAA tournament are hitting 094. Those are incredible numbers. And then that adds to being out of system, predictable offense, and that plays into the Texas block. Looking at this Ohio State team, we can confirm Emily Londot's arm is still attached after she just went off in the regional semi. Emily Londot was on fire and unstoppable. She hit over 500 against a very strong Minnesota team, had 29 kills, and in transition, nobody could stop her. Holly, she is averaging 5.2 kills per set in the tournament. That's a blistering number. Yeah, she's been incredible. And all season long, she's carried a big load, but really relies and counts on her teammates to support her. This will be the third meeting between these two teams. They faced in back-to-back -back matches to start the season back in August, but that was such a long time ago. Both of these teams have evolved dramatically since then. I agree. I don't even, I don't even want to think about those matches because it has been so long, and both teams have improved in every area. Overpass and Emily Londot eats it up for the Buckeyes. Ohio State putting some service pressure right back at Texas. Easy overpass kill for Londot. You're looking at this Ohio State team. They were able to knock out Minnesota, who was the two seed in the Texas quarter of the bracket. And I know that something that stuck out to us in transition, they were so good. Well, Ohio State wasn't trying to stuff the ball, block it straight down. They were trying to get good defensive touches that led them to attack back, and they were so good at it. Zoe Fleck, the Big 12 Libero of the Year, the transfer from UCLA. Overpass, Asia O'Neill will set it up for Sage Kahaina Torres, and then it's Molly Phillips finishing on the right pin. Molly Phillips, just a little off-speed shot to the middle, didn't power it. She likes to hit that ball hard cross-court, and that's what the other team's expecting. Texas has become this well-rounded team, and they've done it by adding 11 new players, six transfers coming into the Texas program, and look what they've been able to do. Yeah, you think, you know, adding 11 new players, that chemistry would be an issue, but Jared Elliott, the head coach for Texas, says this is the best team chemistry-wise he's ever had. Everybody is all in supporting one another. Meanwhile, you look at Ohio State, who added no transfers coming in this season. They have a veteran group who have been Buckeyes most of their careers. Asia O'Neill in the middle. Asia O'Neill leads the country in hitting percentage. She's very good off one foot behind the setter, but she can hit in front as well, and she is a shutdown blocker. Kaylee Akana, one of those transfers coming in from Nebraska, now wearing the burnt orange and white. Kylie Murr with the pass. They'll go to Londot on the right side. And Texas is blocked. Says hello, Asia O'Neill. Really good eye work by Asia O'Neill. Logan Eggleston, the pin blocker, sets up. And then Asia O'Neill closes that seam down on Emily Londot. Texas is averaging just over three blocks per set in the tournament. 
Gonzalez with the pass. Mac Pedraza going back to Londot, who tips, and it drops in front of Fleck. We've seen a lot of power attack by Emily Londot. That time, just a little finesse shot over the block, drops in front of Fleck. Emily Londot, a first-team All-Big Ten selection. She's fifth in the Big Ten in kills per set. And as we told you, averaging 5.2 kills per set in the tourney. Logan Eggleston rejected by the Buckeye block. Ohio State looking for that little tip. Sometimes Logan Eggleston, when she doesn't get her feet to the ball, likes that little tip shot back to the line. But Ohio State all over that one. Service error by Kylie Burr. Service pressure so important. Both of these teams hitting for very high numbers offensively. You want to pull their setters off the net. And Texas has been so good at that. They've really keyed in, especially in that Marquette match. You knew exactly who they were trying to attack with their service pressure. They're really good at locating that serve. And that's what Jared Elliott told us yesterday. We like to go after a passer and just be relentless in terms of service pressure. Tight set to the net, Moore has to tip. Here comes Asia O'Neal on the slide. That looks good. And that's the ball that she hits so well. That's her signature hit behind the setter. High point of contact, and she can hit that ball anywhere. Her dad, Jermaine O'Neal, watching on. Talk about tough serving. Logan Eggleston, she's got it. And there wasn't much Mac Pedraza could do with that, and she's in the back row, so that's going to be a violation. Exactly. She's not allowed to jump off the ground and hit that ball over the net. She has to keep it on her side. Three straight points for the Longhorns. Coming over. Fleck is there. SKT outside to Maddie Skinner. Ohio State's block. Both teams have done a fantastic job scouting. They know what to expect and watch Ohio State. Actually, it's Londot who reaches back and closes that seam. I thought it was Riley Raider, but good scouting report knowing where Texas likes to attack. Emily Londot has two kills and two blocks already. We're early on in this first set. Back row attack to Eggleston. That is a big attack, a back row, quick combination, and it puts so much pressure on the opponent, the middle blocker for Ohio State not to cheat out to the pins. Here's Asia O'Neill. Janasia Moore. She had some really powerful swings on Thursday. Janasia Moore is so dynamic for Ohio State. She can elevate, had some big time blocks as well. And the Ohio State middle attackers were doing so well that she had room to operate through that block. Her offseason was so important for Moore's development. Drops it in. It's Sarah Sue Morbitzer with the ace. This team from Ohio State trusts Sarah Sue Morbitzer back there. She had a big time match on Thursday with a bunch of aces as well. This time going cross into that deep angle. Haley Akana takes it. Eggleston's going to get a swing on this ball. Kylie Murr with a bump set to Gabby Gonzalez. Pedraza sets Gonzalez up. Zoe Fleck with the secondary set to Maddie Skinner. And wow, that block for Ohio State's really strong. Yeah, well, the Ohio State is protecting that little throwback to the line that Texas does a lot. So the scouting report, really good. You see the strong right-hand push on the block from Mac Pedraza of Ohio State. Three straight points for the Buckeyes. Sage to Skinner, off hands. Finally, Texas able to get that good pass and go fast out to that left pin. And Maddie Skinner has some room to work between the two blockers, the middle and right sider. Pedraza's calling on Gonzalez on the angle with some power for Gabby Gonzalez. Head coach Jen Flynn Oldenburg of Ohio State talks about Gabby Gonzalez just being the rock, the most consistent player on the floor. She doesn't get any accolades, but she is the rock that makes them go. 
And look, if you see her in practice, she may have a wrap on her shoulder, a wrap around her abdomen. She may be limping through practice, but she does not want to sit down and take any rep off. You're right. Never take the play off. Good attack out of the middle right there for Texas. And it all starts with that good first contact where Kayla Caffey's isolated one on one in the middle. We only saw Kayla Caffey in the first two sets against Marquette, and then Bella Birdmark came in. She was looked at by the training staff for Texas, but she was a full go yesterday in practice. Texas this year has a lot of depth in the middle. They've got Bella Birdmark, a very strong defensive middle blocker, and then obviously Kayla Caffey and H. O'Neill, the other two. Going to Kathy behind her. Morbitzer saves it. Here's Londot down the line, dug up by Zoe Fleck. Logan Eggleston. Holter is there. They'll try the right pin with Molly Phillips. Pedraza to Gonzalez again, and a net violation on Texas. Point Buckeyes. Texas dug everything, as did Ohio State, and that rally ends with a net violation, but both teams putting a ton of defensive pressure on each other. We have teams with two really good back row plays. DSs on both sides are strong. They're outstanding. Great pass from Fleck. A little off-speed shot from Kayla Caffey. Ohio State doubled up the block in front of Kayla Caffey and just a little finesse soft shot to the middle of the court drops for her. So Zoe Flex going to step back to serve. She has six aces in the tournament. A three time conference libero of the year twice in the Pac-12. Gonzalez, ooh, pretty light shot. Well, I love that play because all tournament long, they've been running Emily Londot out of the middle every single time on that particular play. Londot comes to the middle, and then the Texas block late closing on Gabby Gonzalez on the left. Gonzalez serving. She's got three kills, hitting 500. Both of these teams hitting exactly 286. Dishing it up to Logan Eggleston, the Big 12 Player of the Year. We've been watching Logan Eggleston the last couple of days, and she has been working on her range, getting her feet to the ball, hitting this ball sharp angle with precision right inside that line. Just long for Kayleigh Akana. Eggleston with the tip right over the block. Back to back for Logan Eggleston. Not sure if Logan Eggleston ex expected that set in a little bit more, but she got there with her left hand. And Clears the block on that one. Eggleston, a four-time All-American, has played in that national championship match. She did it in 2020 when Texas lost to Kentucky, but looking for her first title. Dropping in the ace, she now has sole possession of the Big 12 record for aces with 206. And her serve was a little off middle of the season. It's really picked up for the NCAA tournament. That time attacking the seam right between Gonzalez and Murr. And she officially passes Taylor Barnes for that Big 12 record. Riley Raider trying to shove that down. Janasia Moore is wide. Texas ready for that quick attack by Raider in the middle, forcing Ohio State to go to the left pin. Jen Flynn Oldenburg has the green challenge card in her hand, and they are going to use a challenge here. This will be Ohio State's first challenge of the day. You get two challenges. They're looking to see. The ball was called out. I believe they're looking to see if it was in. So as we step aside, we'll give you a look at this. So we have a challenge by Ohio State right at our media timeout. 
So this ball originally called out. We'll let you know the decision when we come back to Austin. So Ohio State not successful in their challenge. They did not see a touch and the ball was out. So the point will stay with Texas. Ohio State will go down to one challenge unless we go to a fifth set. And the 3-0 run continues for Texas. Janasia Moore off the block. Janasia Moore attacking through that seems down the line. Sejka Haina Torres, the smaller blocker on that right pin for Texas. This has been such an even match. Back and forth, two teams were hitting almost identical. Texas pulling ahead, now hitting 353 in the match. SKT to Maddie Skinner. Murr with the dig. It's going to be a bump set from Londot over to Moore. Into the block. Texas fans calling for four contacts. Asia O'Neill on the slide. Zoe Fleck is in a perfect spot. She read the scouting report on Londot, who loves to crush it down the line. And she is sitting down that line, ready to take the heat. What an upgrade for Texas at the Libro position. Getting Zoe Flex started her career at UC Santa Barbara for two seasons, then at UCLA for two seasons, was the two-time Pac-12 Libero of the Year, and now the Big 12 Libero of the Year. And she's just a great learner. She talks about, hey, during COVID, I wanted to learn how to play tennis. She just loves to learn. She's here every day, does not take a playoff, and that's infectious. The she, she said her tennis actually helped her footwork, yep. playing in the back row. Exactly. Opening set here, winner moving on to the national semifinal. Riley Raider on the slide. Maddie Skinner knew it was coming. One of the reasons Maddie Skinner is playing on the left side instead of the right is because she's a shutdown blocker. Look at her get her feet out there, way over the net, nowhere for Raider to go. Janasia Moore comes flying in, but in a, oh no, off the block. There was a block touch and out of bounds, so a point for Ohio State. Off the block, out of bounds. Jared Elliott calls over Eggleston, who's the floor captain. She's the only one that can approach the up official. And our up official has asked for the linesman to come over. the call and say that it was a point for Texas. I, I believe they think it did not clear the net, hit tape, and then went out of bounds, but it looks like it gets the arm of H. O'Neill and the entire Ohio State team was asking for a challenge. They signaled a touch, so I think they believe it went off of Texas and touched Ohio State. Now, Ohio State only has one challenge left, so you don't risk it there. Drop it in like it's nothing. An ace for Asia O'Neal. Asia O'Neal has been putting pressure on teams all season long, taking pride in the numbers and the dig that she provides when she's in the back row. Ohio State forced to call timeout. Texas on a 4-0 run, 19-14 in the opening set. And that service pressure we talked about from Texas, it hasn't gone anywhere. No, and, and that's been a key to the success of Texas. Again, Texas's opponents in the tournament hitting 094, and right now Ohio State hitting 095. Interesting. Numbers don't lie. So Texas has been a team that's always, they've had the power, and they've had the big arms, and they've had the big block, but this year they've upgraded the setting position, more experience there, and also more experience in the back row. I agree. The addition of Zoe Fleck is, has been amazing, and then the freshman Emma Halter has been a bright spot for Texas all season long. But we want to let you know on Sunday, that's coming up tomorrow on ESPN and ABC, you can catch a few of the top teams in women's college basketball. At 1 Eastern, a little rivalry match between Louisville and Kentucky. And then at 3, this will be on ABC. UConn and Maryland, women's college basketball, coming up tomorrow on ABC and the ESPN app.
If you're a volleyball fan, and we know you are because you're watching this match, one lets you know that over on ESPNU right now, Louisville and Oregon are going to a fifth set. We've been watching a little bit of that match before we came on air. It's been intense. Aside from the third set that Oregon won, pretty easily in terms of separation of points. It has been a back and forth battle. Yeah, so again, if you want to see the fifth set for that one, it's over on ESPN U, Louisville and Oregon. One of those teams will go to the national semifinals. We've got coming up after us, Wisconsin and Pitt, followed by our nightcap of San Diego and Stanford. And I promise you, all of these matches are going to be excellent. Texas on a 4-0 scoring run here in set number one. Pedraza to Moore. Dug up by Akana. Here comes Maddie Skinner. Akana in a really nice spot defensively down the line, knowing Janasia Moore of Ohio State likes to turn it down the line. And then Texas, using their own transition offense, kills that one. Londot with the tip right into the middle of the court. It's open. There are some Texas players around that somebody needs to be more aggressive. I'd love to see one of the side, the right back or left back, step in. Logan Eggleston's the deepest player on the floor. Played to 25. Eggleston coming out of the back row. Londot. Zoe Fleck is there again. Skinner too easy for Riley Raider. That's Mac Pedraza on the right side block for Ohio State, but Raider on the assist. She is hanging and swatting. At six foot two, Mac Pedraza is a big blocker for Ohio State on that right pin. Yeah, let, don't, don't let me give away credit to the setter getting a big block. Hey, we celebrate setters. Yeah, absolutely we do. We've got two all-conference setters right here. Mac Pedraza, the Big Ten setter of the year, and Sage Kahaina Torres, the Big 12 setter of the year. Fleck is everywhere. She allows Maddie Skinner to go to work for her third kill. We talked to head coach Jared Elliott yesterday and talked about this little throwdown in the middle that Riley Raider is so good at, but Fleck slides under that ball and Texas able to transition it back. So good. Texas is doing what Ohio State did to Minnesota. Gonzalez take two. Maddie Skinner given everything she has going into the table. That'll be a point for the Buckeyes. Maddie Skinner is so versatile. She can attack from anywhere on the floor. She won a national championship at Kentucky playing on the right side. And in that rotation shows she can still score from there. Texas needs two points to take the opening set. Service error by Skinner. Pedraza trying to start a run for the Buckeyes. Give Eggleston four kills now, and it's set point, Texas. Ohio State is trying to put some burden on Logan Eggleston by serving her, but Zoe Fleck just steps in and takes that ball. That's not what Ohio State wants. The service story has been the situation, right, for Texas. All NCAA tournaments serving aces. Zoe Fleck finishes the first set with an ace off Morbid serve.
Texas takes the opening set 25-18, a spot in the national semifinals on the line. Texas out hitting Ohio State 400 to 148. We saw the tough service pressure continue for Texas. Their block also showed up three blocks in that opening frame. Yeah, but Ohio State actually has four, so yeah. service pressure was the difference. They were able to get Ohio State out of system. So a chance to flip the page here. That's the beautiful thing about volleyball. We start another set, start over. Ohio State, we're going to get that passing going a little bit better. Ohio State starting with Mac Pedraza, their setter in the front row, but they've got Emily Londot available as a back row attacker. Right on Pedraza's head, and they send it up to Gonzalez. Pedraza in the middle to Adria Powell. Logan Eggleston off the block, and she already has five kills. And Zoe Fleck, and another important dig in a good spot that allows Texas to attack back. Logan Eggleston, the beneficiary. Zoe Fleck has six digs. Pedraza, back row to Londot, and she terminates. Emily Londot coming off that career high performance of 29 kills. That's her fourth. Caffey is so dynamic, makes herself available quick off the floor. Jared Elliott loves the dialogue and energy she brings to this team. Well, she's experienced. She's 25 years old, started her career at Missouri, then went to Nebraska, and now here she is as a Texas Longhorn. It's going over. Molly Phillips. Ohio State trying to get aggressive with that set. That one too tight to the net. And Molly Phillips, number 15 in white, takes care of it. Pedraza to Londot in the middle of the court. Double contact called on Ohio State. Yeah, not sure if the ball was wet coming off the defender's arms, but didn't come out clean out of Pedraza's hands, the setter. 3-0 run for Texas. Londot again, they're keeping her in that spot. Halter and Fleck all over it on the back line for Texas. Londot. That ball's wide. We saw Emily Londot score on that sharp cross court a bunch on Thursday. Not working today. Look at Fleck with another important dig and it allows Texas to stay in the rally. She's putting on the pressure with her serve too, although that one was handled pretty nicely by Ohio State's back row and they'll get a kill from Gonzalez. Gonzalez is so deceptive, but good hand contact on the ball. So much spin that that ball drops quickly. Look, Gabby Gonzalez, not her most efficient match in her last outing, 065 hitting percentage. I'd say she's doing pretty well today, hitting 500. <laughs> Service error. And now Kayla Yakana steps back for Texas. Pedraza to the middle. Solid connection with Adria Powell. And a perfect pass by Gabby Gonzalez. Mac Pedraza able to get Adria Powell, who's mostly known for her blocking for Ohio State, but she has a big gap in front of her. O'Neill late to close that. 
Uh, Adria Powell's had a journey around the front of the net. She was training as an outside hitter when Jen Flynn Oldenburg took over the program and then moved her, moved her to the middle because they needed numbers there. How about the block by Janasia Moore, Asia O'Neill. We talked about it, one of the most dominant hitters in the country, but Janasia Moore gets her feet there and shuts it down. Five blocks for Ohio State. Sage getting aggressive. And the timing off, it was really tight to the net. Yeah, Ohio State, they had, they couldn't get anybody to get their feet around that ball to put up a good set. And that's another lost opportunity after a dig. Logan Eggleston already has an ace tonight. Texas has three aces. Ohio State with one. Logan Eggleston has two aces now. Logan Eggleston is putting nice pace and it's got float on it, so it drops in front of the passer. Watch her pop this ball for her third ace of the day. Ohio State calling timeout. Texas up by four. Logan Eggleston, the three-time Big 12 Player of the Year. She's going to be remembered as one of the all-time greats at Texas, whether Texas goes all the way this year or not. She is a fantastic player and already has two aces today. Moore taking it and finding the open court. Janasia Moore, good elevation, and then just a soft shot high deep down that line. Texas won the opening set 25 to 18. They've been in control most of the second set. Winner to the semifinal. Back to Maddie Skinner, a sharp angle. Good isolation by Sage Kahaina Torres, the setter for Texas. She jumps, sets that ball. Looks like she might run the middle and then goes wide to Maddie Skinner and isolates one-on-one, -on -one, and that's advantage hitter every time. Asia O'Neill going after Moore. Pedraza dishes it back to her. Up in the banner, it's still playable because it stays on Texas's side. Opportunity for the Buckeyes. They run Raider in the middle. Sage to Skinner, tooling the block, Maddie Skinner. That time, Ohio State ready for it. Two blockers in front of Maddie Skinner, and she just goes high and hard, wipes it off the block. Maddie Skinner already a national championship champion. Excuse me, she won a championship in 2020, actually defeated Texas when she was playing at Kentucky. Raider saved by Akana. Skinner tips. Pedraza to Moore. the tape in Skinner's favor. Maddie Skinner working so hard to get her feet outside and run that quick ball in transition, which makes it so hard for Ohio State to get out and put up a good block in front of her. Three straight points for the Longhorns. Four. Love it when she goes angle like that. How about that angle? Asia O'Neill was a little bit deeper into the court, but Janasia Moore shows she can hit this angle with range, and this is something she's been working on the last year. Janasia Moore had a preseason battle for the spot that she earned, and there's an ace trickling off the tape. Morbitzer leads her team in aces in this postseason. Second ace for Ohio State today. Skinner's tip. Well, Pedraza was there, Londa was there, and just a little bit tentative. Neither one of them pick it up. Maddie Skinner with eight kills. She had four in the first set. She's got four here in the second set. They're wiping off some moisture on the Ohio State side of the floor. 
the Sage Kaha and Torres ready to serve. Texas is hitting 600 in this set, Holly. Incredible. They're passing the ball well, but it's also the good control dig. We've seen a bunch by Zoe Fleck, and that helps them hit for high numbers. Yeah, seven of them. Nice pass by Murr. Back in off that Texas block, Molly Phillips. Molly Phillips was getting extra block reps for that particular move, that ball tight to the net, making sure she's sliding her hands over the net so there's nowhere to attack. Service error by Kaha and Torres. Do you think Ohio State's serving tough enough? I think they can pick it up a little bit, to be honest with you. I think both teams can, and we've seen Texas with some success, but then you've seen the errors, and that's the thing. Ohio State doesn't want to make errors. They want to keep it in, but it's that fine line between making an error and making it too easy on the other team. And both teams have five service errors. Texas with four aces, Ohio State with two. Skinner going after Gonzalez, goes off with Powell, three ball back to the Longhorns. Sage to Phillips, dug up by Lundon. And Powell in the middle. What a feed by Pedraza, she's front row and elevates to put her middle, Adria Powell, in a good position to score. Mac Pedraza, two-time All-American. Got that Big Ten setter of the year. She is the first player at Ohio State to get Big Ten setter of the year. Wanda coming to get it. Give it to her. Welcome to Austin if you're joining us from watching Louisville punch their ticket back to the national semifinal. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you. We've got Texas, who is the number one overall seed in this tournament, facing Ohio State, who was able to oust Minnesota, the number two seed, in their regional semifinal match. Texas won the first set 25-18. They're up here 14-11, to and their service pressure has been really tough. Yeah, I think Texas is winning that serve and pass battle. They've been able to get Ohio State one pulled off the net and then score some aces, and that's been the difference so far. Texas's back row play has been fantastic, and it's allowed their pins to get up and hit the volleyball, specifically Maddie Skinner, who had four kills in the first set, and she's got four kills already here in set number two. Maddie Skinner is special. She can score, and she loves to hit that quick ball. Even if there's two blockers in front, she can hit with range. Also, a shutdown blocker on that left side. Skinner with a block here. Maddie Skinner, the transfer from Kentucky, where she won a national championship in 2020 and trying to help Texas get back to the national semifinal. It would be the first time since 2020 for the Texas Longhorns. Meanwhile, Ohio State looking for its first national semifinal appearance since 1994. That's been 28 years, so none of these players were alive the last time Ohio State went to a semifinal. Good point, and they really played all out as a team, worked so well together, made adjustments on Thursday, and showed a lot of fight. I was impressed with their play. Yeah, Thursday, you could not miss that young lady right there, number 22 in red, Emily Londot. She was impressive. Just, you know, had a career day, Holly. Yeah, 29 kills yeah. hit over 500 <laughs> when it counted. She's been slowed down a little bit here today. Five kills hitting 250. Plays on the opposite for Ohio State. What kind of adjustments do you want to see from the Buckeyes here at set number two, down three? Well, I've actually seen it the last couple of plays. Texas has been attacking the right back defensively for Ohio State, and both Pedraza and Londot have come up with digs. Alter with the pass, and here is Logan Eggleston, the three-time Big 12 Player of the Year. When Texas is in system like this, you are going to have a hard time stopping them. Big gap it, between the two blockers, and that puts a lot of pressure on the back row defense. 
Uh, Texas is tying a program record at hitting percentage, hitting 343 on the season. That's what they hit last year to lead the nation. Eggleston tooling the block this time. That's her seventh kill. And you see the quality of the first contact from Texas. Sage Kyle Heino Torres, the setter, is able to run whatever she wants, and she keeps pushing that left side pin. Logan Eggleston there with the kill. As a setter, would you kill to have this back row and these littles? I'd love to have all of the teammates. <laughs> I mean, what a talented team and so much depth on the bench. Yeah, Texas really added to their depth. They added to their back row play, going into the transfer portal, adding 11 new players this season. Six transfers. Eggleston is stopped. Ohio State's block making the adjustment, Powell. Well, Texas continues to go to that left side pin. I'd love to see them work more middle, but you see Powell cheating out to that pin to shut that down with Emily Londock for the Ohio State point. Six blocks now for Ohio State. Phillips sends that back over on the second contact. It was a tough pass from Eggleston. And then there's Emily Londot. We've seen Emily Londot go a little bit deeper, but hitting that cross-court ball and with success. You know what we saw on Thursday from Londot? Her toolkit, it's huge. Like, she's got to check that bag on the airplane. <laughs> she certainly so does. <laughs> she can hit every shot. She told us that's been one of her biggest areas of improvement since she arrived at Ohio State. Making sure she's got every shot in the book. Sage Kahai to Torres to Logan Eggleston, who turns it down the line right at Pedraza. Again, you see Texas attacking Ohio State's right back position. A lot of good things can come out of it because if the setter, Mac Pedraza, digs it, somebody else has to step in and set it for Ohio State, and that's Ohio State's disadvantage in most cases. Kayla Akana serving it more. It comes back over. Sage Kahaina Torres throws it down. Service pressure continues to be the story for Texas. Akana, who had seven aces in the first round, gets an easy overpass, and SKT throws it down for Texas. You keep the service pressure on, it limits how many attackers the opponent can use. Serving for Ohio State, Kylie Murr. Kylie Murr steps back, the ben Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. Texas has a front row setter, only two hitters available, nobody in the back row can hit. Sixth service error by the Buckeyes. And here comes Logan Eggleston. Her serve went away for a little bit during the season. Well, guess what? It is back. She's got two aces today. That's my fault. Every Jake time Stern. you say I that, know. she's missed her serve. That, hey, so, no. Yeah. <laughs> one time I said it, and she got an ace. OK. <laughs> so you're one for three. Next time, I just won't speak. <laughs> Texas again, set her front row, but Logan Eggleston in option. Out of the back row, but first Texas needs to pass that ball. Good serve by Londot. The reason I love this serve, it's got great pace, but goes away, makes Zoe Fleck move to her right between she and Akana. Third ace for Ohio State. Akana takes it, hand set from Eggleston to Skinner. No touch point, Ohio State. I love that set by Eggleston. Very confident using her hands. And when we talked to Jared Elliott, they practice that a lot. When set, when the setter digs or can't get to the ball, everybody should be able to put up a hittable ball. So Texas calls a timeout. If you want to continue watching this match, we're going to stay on ESPNU. So make sure you tune over to ESPNU if you're not there yet. Timeout, Texas. Bijan Robinson in the house. This is a big match. They were lined up outside, Holly, to see this round of eight match between Texas and Ohio State. Hottest ticket in town. That's right. They say the capacity is about 4,000. There may be more people than that. In Standing here. room only in all four corners. Looking at this Ohio State Buckeye team, 
This is the third year under Jen Flynn Oldenburg, and you see the progress that she's made at her alma mater, so you know that it means more to her to lead this Buckeye program. They made their third straight regional semifinal, and now they're in the regional final for the first time since 2004. And this has been an incredible group led by Mac Pedraza to help Ohio State have their best finish in a long time. Buckeyes on a 3-0 run, seeking their first semifinal since 1994. Pedraza to Londot in the back row. Off the tape, saved by Fleck. Wow, Texas still finds a way to score on that. Little misfire on that back row set. Not sure if that was to Logan. Everyone kind of looking around, trying to figure out what happened. Good dig by Zoe Fleck. It was to Logan, just didn't get her feet there. But good throw down to the middle of the court and a breakdown in communication for Ohio State. Jenna Eward is going to sub in for Texas to serve. Dances on the top of the tape, but falls on the Texas side. So Ohio State will take it. Jenna Eward, one of those transfers, new players. She was a all Pac-12 setter at Colorado. Sometimes you wonder, with so many transfers, so many new faces, how is the chemistry going to be? Jared Elliott has told us time and time again, this is one of the most fun teams he's been a part. They get along so well. And the players agree with that. Maddie Skinner saves it. Pedraza looking at her options. She finds Raider. There's Black. Skinner dug up by Murr. Gonzalez on the outside. Maddie Skinner with the tip. Wondot's there. Kayla Caffey took a swing, but Ohio State's block is going to come through. I love that aggressive swing by Kayla Caffey. She was not tentative, but Riley Raider for Ohio State. Watch her, number 20 in red. This ball goes over, and she gets up, presses that ball. Good discipline block for Ohio State. Look, Riley Raider was key in Ohio State's win over Minnesota in the regional semifinals on Thursday. She had 12 kills, hit 435. Hasn't been as offensive today, but she has six blocks. And that's important. Sometimes your offense isn't going to be there, and you want to do the little things to help support your team. This is a 5-1 to one run for the Buckeyes. Playing to 25. Free ball. Raider. There's the offense. And, and it starts with the tough serve. They're getting a little shank off Zoe Fleck. That's not easy to do. Sarasu Morbitzer for Ohio State. Making things happen from the service line. First time we've been tied since it was one to one here in set number two. And the fans now on their feet. There's a lot of burnt orange in here. Back to Raider. Eggleston, one arm. Skinner with the swing. Madraza to Raider again. Kathy blocks it. Raider a third time, you bet. We are seeing so much fright from Ohio State. We saw it Thursday, but they are responding and making plays. Look at the confidence. Pedraza to Raider, and they score out of the middle. First lead of this set for the Buckeyes. Maddie Skinner sails it. No touch on that ball. Point Ohio State. Now they're up by two. And it's only because of the service pressure. Little tweak in the pass. And then Sage Kahina Torres is way off the net to set that ball. Texas is going to make a substitution. Melanie Parra comes in, replacing Maddie Skinner. Parra has to track it down. This is going to be a free ball. Bumps that to Gonzalez, stopped! Kathy! Kayla Kathy of Texas put a roof on that. She was so far over the net. She knows it's going to the left side, gets her feet there, hands pointed down. Wow. Powerful punch out of the middle from Raider. Molly Phillips grabs it. Gonzalez readjusting. And went right at the setter, Sage Kahaina Torres. 
Gabby Gonzalez gets her up, little tool down the line, and Texas can't come up with it. Ohio State needing two points to even up this match at a set apiece. I love the way this Ohio State team communicates with one another. You can feel the energy. They're all talking to each other between plays. Texas is going to sub Maddie Skinner back into the match, replacing Para. Riley Raider on the serve. Fleck handles it beautifully. Blondot out of the back row. Zoe Fleck flying! And it's going to be a double contact. Sage was tripping over Fleck as she tried to set that ball. What a dig by Zoe Fleck. But yes, she was under the feet of SKT. And there's Maddie Skinner as well. Everyone trying to get to that ball. Fleck is okay. She got kicked a couple of times. It is set point Ohio State. A 10 to 2 run for the Buckeyes here. The passing is broken down a little bit for Texas. They need to clean that up, and Ohio State has taken care of business. Molly Phillips swinging on the left pin. Petraza to Gonzalez tooling the block. Matches even. Ohio State wins set to 25-21. What a response from Ohio State. They end on an 11-2 run, and we're at least playing four. Winner of this match moving on to the national semifinal. Even at a set apiece in this round of eight match between Ohio State and Texas, a pretty full house inside Gregory Gym. They are all the way up to the rafters to watch this one. One team has already punched its ticket to the national semifinal. That would be Louisville. They took down Oregon in five sets behind 17 kills from Anna DeBeer, who's been coming back from an injury. Remember, she missed 12 matches with a knee injury. She has come on full force here over the last couple of matches. And now we're about to send the next team to the national semifinal. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you. And don't forget, we've got some exciting matches coming up. But how about Louisville and Oregon going to five? Well, we got to watch that early before we started our match. Back and forth battle. Incredible. And Anna DeBeer to come back from that injury and contribute like that. Impressive. Yeah, Louisville hit 350 in the final fifth set. And they were able to eliminate Oregon, who's had a fantastic year this season. But hey, even after we're done here in Austin, we still have two more matches for you. I cannot wait. I have charged the iPad. We are ready to go. Uh, San Diego and Stanford, that's going to be our late match of the night. But coming up next will be Wisconsin and Pitt. That's coming up at 8 Eastern here on ESPNU. And Wisconsin coming off a season high 23 blocks. And they're the defending champions, too. So they want to win it back. Yeah, so we've got two more matches. Don't forget, coming up at 8 Eastern and 10 p.m. Eastern. So get ready for more volleyball. I know we are. Looking at this match, what a run for Ohio State. They ended the second set on an 11-2 run. Emily Londot coming off that career high. Well, she's got six kills tonight, three digs and three blocks. Well, Texas was able to slow her down a little bit in the first set, but she made some adjustments and now on fire. She's got six kills. Gabby Gonzalez has seven, so it's a team effort in everybody making things work for Ohio State in that last set. I feel like, too, their serving game really got Texas's passers into a bind. In the middle of the second set, that was the difference. They kept pulling Texas off the net, and then the offense became predictable, and Ohio State was able to score with their defense. I want to remind you, coverage of the Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. It will continue all day here on ESPNU with regional finals and a chance to play in Omaha. For more information, visit NCAA.com. Home for all 90 NCAA championships. Myself, Holly McPeak, Katie George, Eric Freed will be with you next week in Omaha. It's already sold out. I cannot wait. I can't either. I don't know if I'll be able to sleep between now and then. But well, I hope that you first. do. First things first. First things first. We got to get the teams there. Louisville's already in. So is the team.
teams retake the floor, we already see a change for Texas. Bella Bergmark, number five in white, has come in. Jared Elliott has been telling us that she's ready con to contribute if they need her. And we saw her come in and play two sets in their win over Marquette on Thursday in the round of 16. Eggleston with the tip, and it comes right back, and we want on. I want to see Logan Eggleston swing hard at that ball. Ohio State is ready for that little tip shot, and Emily Londot is big. She gets her feet there, sees it, and throws it back down for the Ohio State point. Texas is hitting 400 in the tournament, but in that last set, they hit 188, and that is a set low in the tournament this year. And give that credit to Ohio State. Tough serving and great team defense. Molly Phillips packing a punch. We have not been able to call her name very often, but Molly Phillips is a very effective hitter on that right side and a big blocker. Morbitzer with the pass. They'll go Londot in the middle. And as we've seen Holly, usually when she's there, they give her the ball. And I've seen them run a different set out to the pin one time out of probably 25 times. So Texas knows that's coming, and they still can't stop her. That's the toolkit we're talking about, right, for Emily Londot? She hits with such range. She grew up, her mother was a volleyball coach and All-American at Louisville. So grew up in a gym, good volleyball IQ. She told us, I played every position in high school, middle, outside hitter, but I love playing in the opposite. Murr hustles to get it. Texas sends it right back. Murr with a bump set to Moore, attacking error into the net. Texas pushing Ohio State. Ohio State shows they've got a lot of fight left, and Texas needs to step up, and they do on that last play. Kana going after Moore. Pedraza sets it up for Moore. Texas with its seventh block. Texas wants the left side players to carry big load, have to pass, and then work for their approach. And that allows Texas to set up their block on that pin. Sage Ka, Heine Torres, and Ajo O'Neal with the Texas block. By talking to Jarrett Elliott, they felt like they would have a lot of success serving that back left area, zone five. Two back shutdowns. Asia O'Neill. Asian O'Neill only has three kills in this match so far, but she is making her presence felt defensively. Eight blocks each for Ohio State and now Texas. Petraza in the middle to Powell. Now to Moore. Looking to go really sharp, a little too long. Janasia Moore showed earlier that she can hit that angle. That one misses by an inch. Four straight points for Texas. That's tight. And Mac Pedraza is in the back row. Correct, that allows the blocker for Texas to go up and get that ball. Ohio State calls timeout here in set three. Texas, five straight points. Look at the small world in the volleyball community, right? Brian Wright, who is now on the Ohio State sidelines. He was a volunteer assistant coach at Texas from 2008 to 2014. He was a part of that 2012 national championship team for the Texas Longhorns. That was the last time they won it all 10 years ago. And also played for the men's club team, so was a student here at Texas. And this is the third time, too, that these two programs are meeting this season. They actually opened the season with a doubleheader. Texas took both of those wins in Columbus. But both teams have evolved so much since then as Logan Eggleston terminates. And credit Emma Halter for that second ball stepping in and setting that to Logan Eggleston. That's the thing. After a dig, you want to put your hitters in positions to score. And Emma Halter, the freshman, does just that.
Eggleston, the first player on either team in double figure kills now with 10. It's been six straight points for Texas. Saints going back to her three time Big 12 player of the year. Take two, Logan. Good reset after the first dig. Good cover play by Zoe Fleck. And SKT pushes it back out to Eggleston, who goes to that deep corner to end, the, to end that rally. This will be a bump set for Murr to Moore. Blondot. Dug up by Akana, it's coming over. Taken care of by Janasia Moore. Emily Londot sets that up with a good transition swing that's dug over the net. That ends a 7-0 run by Texas. Remember though, we saw Ohio State finish set number two on an 11-2 run. Seven service errors now for the Buckeyes. You have one of the best servers to do it, stepping back. Logan Eggleston has already put her name by itself in the Big 12 record books tonight in career aces. She came into this match tied for that record. Fleck, fantastic up, still going. There's gonna be a center line violation on Asia O'Neill. Asia O'Neill, I believe, crossed that line with her foot after she hit that ball. Serving for a mile stadium, Emily Longbottom. Jared Elliott talking to the down official about it. Watch where Asia O'Neill lands with her feet, and you see her cross that line. And there's an Ohio State player right there in the vicinity, so that can become dangerous. Very. Riley Raider number 20 in red is doing such a nice job laterally in her press over the net. She gets over quick. I'd love to see more attacks out of the middle from Texas. Run their middles to free things up on the pins. They'll give O'Neill up a one foot and that block was ready. Ohio State all over it. Both Raider and Janasia Moore knew that ball was coming. Raider late, Janasia Moore gets all of that. That's 10 blocks now for Ohio State. Skinner going after it, turns it down the line. Kayla Akana that time steps in for that second ball set and Maddie Skinner attacks down that line. Skinner had four kills in the first set, four kills in the second set. That is her first kill here in set number three, just hitting 125. Pedraza, first time we've seen her be aggressive tonight. That demands the respect of the, respect of the block. Skinner again. Saved by Gonzalez. Janisha Moore. Look at this rally. Bergmark. Skinner. We play on. Ron Dot. It's long. Point Texas. How about that? There were so many good things that happened in that play. I don't even know where to start, but Emily Londot had a play that almost hit her in the head. She had her hands up and dug it off of Skinner down that line, but wow. <laughs> service error, Texas. That's the ninth service error for the Longhorns. They've got four aces. It's 
been about the defense in this set. Neither team hitting for a great percentage here in set number three. Ohio State hitting negative, Texas hitting zero. Skinner got it, she's in double figures. But Texas out of system, the pass wasn't great, but Maddie Skinner able to do some work and go deep to that corner. And we talked about Maddie Skinner when she entered the transfer portal. She told us yesterday, you know, I didn't, wasn't really thinking about coming home, but talking to Jared Elliott, he said, I'm not taking no for an answer. You're coming to Texas to be a Longhorn. He was persistent, and when she came here, she was blown away by the support the athletes get here. Bella Bergmark, another player for Texas off the transfer portal. Her strength is her blocking. Watch her get there. Big press over the net. Great instinctual blocker. What's hit by Raider, but going back to Maddie Skinner, you know, she said, I really wanted to train my all around game and work on my back row play and also my serve. And she's been able to do that every time we watch practice, Holly. She stays after her, Logan Eggleston, Zoe Fleck. They're getting extra reps passing. This is a group of players who want to be great and they continue to get those extra reps every day. We've been here all week and seen that work. Holly Phillips this time from the left side. Molly Phillips, four kills on nine swings, hitting 444. And now Maddie Skinner is going to go back to serve. Jared Elliott told us adding her serve has been really important for them. She's got a tough one. Gonzalez handles it pretty well. Back to Gabby Gonzalez through Texas's block. Gabby Gonzalez leads Ohio State with eight kills on 19 swings. Service error. Looks like Max Pedraza was trying to serve that ball short middle into traffic for Texas, but this is short. Gonzalez had to stop her approach to get that swing off. Eggleston deep in the court. Doesn't matter for Logan Eggleston. 12 kills now. Logan Eggleston moves to the center of the court to dig this ball and then moves out to that gap so she can get a transition swing, goes high off the hand. Ohio State calls timeout. Texas up 16 to 9 here in set number three. Now, Logan Eggleston, she's been a main factor for Texas since she arrived. But we talked about those new pieces. And you see right there Zoe Fleck talking in the huddle. She's been fantastic today to keep those rallies alive and give Texas an opportunity to attack. She's a communicator, right? And a connector, according to the head coach. And you can see that her teammates trust her, putting herself in great spots to help this team score points when it counts. She's just incredible. She is a walking highlight reel. She takes volleyball so seriously. We were talking to her. She said, my goal is to play for the national team, to win a gold medal with Team USA. And she continues to try and get better every day, and I love that. Pushes herself and her opponents to get better all the time. Look, it's incredible what she can do on the court. How about what she can do off the volleyball court? I grew up in Santa Monica area, like original Muscle Beach, which is basically like an outdoor adult playground. And it was just my escape. I got to be outside, I got to be working out, and I got to be learning. And so I just started doing handstands. And now I can hold a handstand for a pretty long time. I can do backflips, I can do rings, I can balance on literally anything. Just from spending a couple years diving into that community and learning as much as I can. Watching this makes me so nervous, even though I know that she's harnessed in. Terrifying. Terrifying. Oh, my goodness. But the flipping, um, Holly and I are going to work on that Ooh. before next week. I'll, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> I'll watch. But you see why she's so graceful on the court and able to get to every ball. Ajo O'Neal got a piece of that one. I love that Ajo O'Neal has sharpened her focus defensively at the net. Like I said, she hasn't got 
a bunch of attempts, but she is making a difference defensively. Three straight points for Texas with Zoe Flex serving. And an ace for Black! Black has been bringing it from the line. On Thursday, she was going line to line. But this time, actually, that one is line to line at Gabby Gonzalez. And they talked about wanting that area five right into traffic. Area five, right where Gabby Gonzalez is standing, where she passed that volleyball. You add the tough serve with the tough block. Wow. Texas knows that attack from Lawn Dots coming out of the middle. Logan Eggleston comes in to help three big blockers for Texas. Flex saves it. Bounces off the net. Point for Ohio State. That ends a 5-0 run by the Longhorns. Texas to 20 points first. Trying to get to 25. More. Zoe Fleck. Wow. That had a lot of heat on it, too, for more. Here comes Londot. Another chance. Powell at the net. Buckeyes keep it going. Janasia Moore down the line in a scrappy rally on both sides. Ohio State, sometimes they don't block it straight down, but they get good defensive touches off their block that they're able to pass and run the offense. And you see Janasia Moore score down that line. That was a huge key for them in their win in the regional semifinal on Thursday against Minnesota, the number two seed in the Texas quadrant. look tonight and you we, you want to reward Asia O'Neal she's doing it on the defensive end give her some balls like that last two kills by Asia O'Neal Pedraza forcing it to Raider Skinner battling at the net. Eggleston out of the back row. The up by Murr. But Ohio State can't help her. She got there. Kylie Murr flies in out of left back position, but nobody can get to that second ball. What a dig. Logan Eggleston, perfect location, but Murr, wow. Set by Raider, but she gets that kill. Well, Mac Pedraza is just fearless, the setter for Ohio State. She gets under it, feeds Raider, knows that if she gets a hand on it, she's going to kill it. Dot going after Kayla Akana, number 12 in white, cross court. Good pace and movement on this ball. Second ace for Londot. Followed by a service error. So Texas using this sub. Devin Kahahawai coming in, number 44 in white. And Jared Elliott told us yesterday she's their best blocking right-sider. 
Bergmark also rotates in. She gets tested. Bergmark. That was a blocking substitution by Jared Elliott, and it pays off for point 24. They're out of system. Everybody knows that ball is going to Janasia Moore. Bergmark, good left hand press over the net. Set point, Texas. Pedraza in the middle. It's Bergmark again, and Texas takes a two to one lead in the match. Blocking numbers and defense was the difference, and Texas goes up 2-1 over Ohio State. Texas turning the defense up in set number three. They had eight blocks in that set. And that was a huge difference for Texas. They held Ohio State to negative 105. Texas with 13 and a half blocks in this match. They also got their offense going a little bit more after hitting 188 in set number three. They hit 240 in set number, excuse me, in set number two, they hit 188. Hit 240 in set number three. They've done it in front of a packed home crowd. A new record tonight, 5,344 inside Gregory Jim. People hanging from the rafters, squished in the corner. They don't care. They want to be here supporting their Texas Longhorns. Well, why not? There's so much on the line tonight. We've already seen one team advance to the national semifinal. Louisville is there. Texas trying to make their 10th semifinal in the last 15 years. Ohio State hasn't been there since 1994. Molly Phillips loves to go angle, and Ohio State knows that. Good adjustment by Phillips, turning it down that line for Texas. Line dot in the middle, and she tools the block. Texas had three blockers there, going outside hand of Bergmark out of bounds. Eighth kill for Emily Londot. This is a must-win set for Ohio State. Molly Phillips threw that ball straight down. It was open, but misses it wide. has to scramble to get it to Eggleston. Pedraza to Moore. Pedraza to Raider. They've been trying to develop that connection a little more on the offensive side as this match has gone on. And it's been really good in Ohio State. They've been able to score off it, but Texas middle blockers are really on it. Quick hands over the net trying to slow that down, knowing it's a huge weapon for Ohio State. Joey Fleck has two aces and 14 digs tonight. Londot. Oh, wow! The power from Emily Londot! Emily Londot gets his set pushed all the way across the court from Pedraza. Look at the power down the line. Not even Zoe Fleck can come up with that one. Londot, her high school coach, was her mom, Lori. Coached her all four years. Her mom was a left-handed middle. The first All-American at Louisville. Her alma mater already in the national semifinal after a five-set win over Oregon earlier today. Yeah, how cool for Emily to get to play for her mom. She told us, you know, my parents let me try every sport that I wanted to, and I love that because I didn't have to love volleyball, but she does. That's 
14 kills for Logan Eggleston. And I love when she's aggressive. Too much tipping early on, in my opinion, when Logan Eggleston gets her feet to the ball and swings hard, she is terminal. She's hitting 4.07 tonight. Pedraza gave it everything she had, but Kayla Akana will take that point. Texas going line to line on that serve, trying to put a ton of pressure on number 18 in red, Janasia Moore. Six aces for Texas. They have the most aces in the tournament out of the remaining teams. Gives them 38 in the tournament. Duff Swain for Emily Londot. Well, Ohio State was out of system. They've got a big gun on the right side. Even though she's back row, she's usually pretty terminal. Just couldn't get her feet under that ball. Three zero run for Texas. Ward dug up by Halter. Eggleston. Logan Eggleston doing the work with her feet, showing she's got range. This time, deep line. She loves this deep line ball. Emma Halter controls the first contact, and then the defender creeps up, and she goes deep. It's coming back to Texas. Asia O'Neill will take that all day. In the middle of that play, Logan Eggleston said, you take that, making sure that they were clear on the communication on that overpass. Greater in the middle. Sage going to the slide with O'Neal. Great off by Gonzalez, but it goes back over. And double contact called on Gabby Gonzalez. That is six straight points for Texas. And Jen Flynn Oldenburg wants to call a timeout. It's a must win set for Ohio State to extend the match, but Texas with five straight points. We still have two more matches to go. Coming up at the top of the hour, Caroline Crawford, the defending national champion, Wisconsin going to take on Pitt that's coming up at 8 Eastern here on ESPNU. Our nightcap is going to be out on the West Coast, Stanford and San Diego. That'll be approximately 10 Eastern. We are sending teams to the national semifinals today. Texas has scored six straight points. If Texas wins this set, they're advancing to Omaha. Riley Raider, Mac Pedraza just keeps going to her. Well, there's so much confidence in that connection, and it's important for a setter and a middle blocker to have that trust. And Pedraza has a ton of trust in Raider putting that ball away. Five kills for Raider, eight blocks for Riley. Asia O'Neill made that look so easy. Well, Asia O'Neill identified that the middle blocker pulled out of the block, and that leaves the middle of the court open. You see Raider in the middle. She's so late, she just pulls out of it, and Asia O'Neill throws it down in the middle. This one sails long by Eggleston. Ten service errors for Texas, nine for Ohio State. Fleck tries to step in front of Akana and take that. It's going to be an ace for the Buckeyes. Riley Raider attacking the seam between two passers. Communication is so important if you're Texas. of Londot back to the Texas side. SKT will set up the slide again with O'Neal. Pedraza with the tip, Fleck is there. Skinner over the block. And a net violation on Ohio State. 
both teams knew exactly where the other team was going to go. One on the setter dump and then the tip over the block. The timing a little bit off, but Maddie Skinner's long and turns it down that line with a big reach. Asia O'Neill serving with her dad right behind her. <laughs> it's a good hustle from Ohio State to get this free ball back. SKT dishing it up to Skinner. Once a touch, no touch called, point Ohio State. Good looking attempt there. Maddie Skinner trying to go off the hands, but she wants to get on top of that ball. She can go over the top. Texas's offense for the most part in this set has been pretty fluid. They're hitting 333. That's a nice pass from Fleck. They can run Eggleston out of the back and Adria Powell. Good discipline blocked by Adria Powell. She's in the middle of the court. This is stressful, that back row quick that I talked about earlier, but she does the eye work, gets her feet in front of it. Nice press over. Fantastic block. Why is it stressful in the middle? Because she can go left, right, anywhere. So it puts a lot of pressure. She doesn't know where she can go and she can't release to get out to those pins. Blocked again. Al and Londot working together for Ohio State. Net violation on Texas. Point Ohio State. Ohio State doing a good job slowing down Maddie Skinner right now. I would love to see off a good pass running Bella Bergmark out in the middle of the court, making Adria Powell the hot blocker right now for Ohio State move a little bit. And bird mark number five in white. She goes back to Skinner and she will terminate. And she gives her team so much energy on that. She goes off one foot. Look how far Pedraza has to set that ball to feed Emily Londot, but it pays off with the kill down the line. Well, she told us, I love being a big arm and the opposite. You know, a lot of times you see your heavy hitters in that outside hitter position. She's like, no, I'm going to dominate the right pin. There's that offense out of the middle for Texas that we need to see more of to hold that middle blocker and create some gaps in the block on the other side of the net. Bella Burmark was inserted later into this match. Saw the same thing happen in their regional semifinal match on Thursday. She entered. Remember, Texas has a very deep bench. More off of the hand of Phillips. Janasia Moore so good just seeing that outside hand of Molly Phillips and it wasn't turned back into the court. She's able to wipe it off. Janasia Moore also a volleyball legacy, if you will. Her mom played volleyball at Norfolk State. I think there's six Buckeyes whose moms played collegiate volleyball. Correct. That's a huge number. They have to have the most in the country. Got that pop. Love her arm. Mac Pedraza again, fantastic location, feeding her hitters, and Janasia Moore heating up on the outside. Buckeyes tie it. It's a 6-2 to two run for Ohio State. Bergmark out of the middle. Londot. Coming on strong, Halter was there, but it stopped. Now a 7-2 to run for Ohio State. And it starts with their defensive touches off their block, and they get these 
swing opportunities for Emily Londot, and that's how Ohio State is scoring. We've seen Ohio State be able to put together those runs. They ended the second set on an 11-2 run, won that set 25-21. Swing is wide for Eggleston. That time, Texas was in system, ran two quick balls, just hit wide, and Ohio State has all the momentum. And Jared Elliott wants to talk about it. It is four straight points for the Buckeyes. And the tables have turned. You see Ohio State now hitting 353 in this set, mostly in transition balls, and Texas only 167. Look, this Ohio State program, they lost their four regular season, their last four regular season matches. They have flipped the script. They've done it with a veteran group, and they've done it with a couple of players, too, that made some history earlier on for the Ohio State program. And everybody has to do a little pinky promise. Pinky promise that you can't share the news that we have the first setter of the year, first defensive player of the year, the Big Ten ever in history. Standing before you right now, you can't share until Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Look, I've watched that video about 10 times, and I still get goosebumps, but it just shows you how good they have at two key positions. Kylie Murr, the Defensive Player of the Year in the Big Ten, and Mac Pedraza, the Big Ten Setter of the Year. Yeah, this is a special group, and they've grown together. They came in as freshmen, and they keep getting better. In fact, a large group of them could come back for a COVID year if they wanted, Ooh. but they want to take care of business this year COVID. before they decide that. COVID making things extra interesting again. Want to let you know, coming up tonight on ESPN, you can catch the 88th annual Heisman Trophy ceremony presented by Nissan. The four finalists, Stetson Bennett, Max Duggan, CJ Stroud, and Caleb Williams. Find out who takes home the most coveted award in college football. It's at 8 Eastern, live on ESPN and the ESPN app. John Robinson and some of the Texas football players. This is a hot ticket. Remember, we set a record for Gregory Jim tonight. Over 5,300 people in to watch this volleyball match. There's Kylie Murr. It was a great dig, but Bergmark cleaning it up on the Texas side of the net. Eggleston being way more aggressive for Texas in it. Ends up with that over dig. Fantastic by Murr to get under that, but Bergmark with the easy kill for Texas. That ends a 4 0 run by the Buckeyes. Juan Dot. Logan Eggleston, that puts her at 16 kills, hitting over 300. Sage Kahaina Torres, the right back defender and setter for Texas, dug a great ball by Londot there. Look, SKT's confidence has been a big part of Texas's success, too. She really started to own that this was her team in the spring, got used to all these new weapons that she has to play with. And it helps, too, when her team's blocking like that. It's going to be a new season high for Texas in blocks. Asia O'Neill knows his ball's going outside. They need to be disciplined because Janaza Moore has been sneaky all night long, and they get her on that one. Season high, 15 and a half blocks. The previous high was 15 blocks. And now it's three points in a row for the Longhorns. Until that finish right there from Emily Londot. Ohio State completely out of system, but Emily Londot finds a way to put it away. She's like their safety net. Well, it's nice to have a player like that on your team, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Tied at 16. Ohio State has to win this set in order to extend the match. A win for Texas, and they're going to Omaha. Service error. Pedraza to the connection. 
transition to Reader. Eggleston up by Murr. Logan Eggleston chasing after it. Blocked, and we're still going thanks to Emma Halter. Reader can't stuff it. Janasia Moore. Asia O'Neill's on fire defensively. She is owning the net for Texas, and she has been the difference lately, but some amazing cover plays there to keep it alive. Asia O'Neill with seven blocks, making eight blocks. Texas on a five to one run since the timeout. Double contact. McConaug picking up the service pressure in Ohio State wants a timeout. The energy in this building is electric. Ohio State's last time out as Texas. They can feel Omaha coming. Still some work to do. Ohio State not far behind, but this Texas program trying to get a national championship for the first time in 10 years. They did it last in 2012. I can't believe how fast it's gone. It's been already 10 years. When I think back, there was so much growth throughout the year, but there was also so much joy in the journey that we had, and so it was really special. His 10-year national championship is a really special part of the legacy of this program. I remember being 12 and watching that match, and that match was literally the reason why I wanted to come here, so I'm definitely going to put in all I can to get him this natty. More so than wanting this for me, I really want this for him. Jarrett Elliott, it's been incredible what he's done. His 22nd season as Texas's head coach, won 83% of his games. They've won six straight Big 12 titles. A couple of NCAA national championships for this Texas program. They also have an AIAW championship. Last time we saw them in the championship match was in 2020, and they lost to Kentucky. Yeah, this is a special group. Jared Elliott says, you know what, he loves coming to practice and he's enjoying the journey and that's really important you have to be present but i'll tell you if you're texas you cannot take a playoff because ohio state has so much fight in them yeah texas is on a 3-0 run but we've seen ohio state put the runs together before they've got to do it now one dot out of the back row Gets it through Texas's block, and that ends the run. Little soft touch works off the deflection. Ohio State, they want to get Texas out of system and put some pressure on them with their block. O'Neal, slide, saved by Morbitzer. Gabby Gonzalez, she's in the double figures with 10. Gabby Gonzalez takes big swings for this team. I talked about her earlier being the rock of this Ohio State. She doesn't get all the accolades, but she does it all. A key six rotation player for Ohio State. The bump set to Eggleston from Flag. Turns it down the line. Texas the first to 20. That second contact. Zoe Fleck stepping in. Look at that long touch off her platform. Just laying it up for Logan Eggleston to tee off. Raider in the middle. Double block and Riley Raider goes cross body away from the blockers, finding open court. Riley Raider just continues to work hard. That's her sixth kill, eight blocks tonight for Riley Raider. Wiping up some moisture on the Texas side of the court, and now Raider will get ready to serve. Skinner off hands. Londot 
to Pedraza. It's long from Gonzalez. But that was the deflection that Ohio State wanted. They just didn't get the kill off of it. like a Texas player's leg might have hit the net and Mac Pedraza telling her coach we have to challenge this ball and Jen Flynn Oldenburg will challenge it this is will be and well if Ohio State only has one challenge unless we go to a fifth set if they're correct in this challenge they'll get to keep it but yeah, let's take another look at that because I think I saw the same thing you did Holly uh, I think it might be on the bottom of the net by a Texas player yeah it's Maddie Skinner's leg So remember, the original call was Ohio State in the net, Point Texas. How about the joust by Mac Pedraza? Setter's famous for being good at that joust on those tight balls. Got to get that last push. And they will call Texas in the net and give the point to Ohio State. Buckeyes get to keep their challenge. So our score now 21 Texas, 20 Ohio State. A race to 25 points. Out of the back row, soaring, flying, Logan Eggleston. What a beautiful uh, execution of the big set. That back row quick out of the middle. Texas has done it all year long. And Logan Eggleston goes away from the block. Finding some hard court. One dot on one foot. One dot rips it down the line. Fleck is there. Maddie Skinner, cross court, saved by Moore. One dot again, grabbing the block. Emily Londot finds a way attacking that outside hand of the blocker, just sneaking it by. I don't know how she does it. She's crafty. 13 kills, 14 kills for Londot. Gonzalez thought that should have been a double. Here comes Eggleston off the block. Eggleston again. Maddie Skinner is going to set up Logan in his match point, Texas. Transition setting the key for Texas scoring those points. Draws in a lawn dot, it's tight. They get it back over. Sage to Eggleston. Texas is coming for you, Omaha. Get ready for the Longhorns. Ohio State pushed Texas to the limit, but Texas responded, especially in that last set. Back in the national semifinal for the first time since 2020, Texas, the number one overall seed, advancing.
advancing to Omaha. It will be their 14th appearance in the semifinal. Two teams are in, two teams still to be decided. Coming up next, Wisconsin and Pittsburgh. We'll get you to Madison right now as Texas wins it in four over Ohio State. We'll see the Longhorns in Omaha next week.